into depth on how to set up the Prusa slicer for the use of the Anycubic Viper. In our previous video, we showed you how to optimize Cura slicer for Viper. Some of you were a little intimidated by all the options Cura had, so we are making this video to anyone who may be new to 3D printing. Before we turn it over to Will, I will be going over a few Prusa base setup basics. This will be all you need to get started using Prusa Slicer with your Viper. The first step will be going into Prusa3D.com. Click on the Software tab and then Drivers and Firmware. Select the drivers and apps for the latest version of the Prusa MK3S, in our case MK3S+. Plus. Once it's downloaded, then open the program and you should see this image. Okay, so first things first, we have to configure it for the Viper. In the top right corner right here, you will see three options, simple, advanced, and expert. Set it to expert. And then over here on the left, you'll see printer settings. We will set the bed shape to, on X, it'll be 245 and Y will also be 245 and then come down here click OK and then our max print height is 260 and then you will come over here to print settings come right here to speed and then we're going to change our perimeters so our perimeters are going to be 45 our small perimeters are going to be 25. Our external perimeters are going to also be 25. Our infill is going to be 80. Our solid infill is going to be 80. And then our top infill is also going to be 80. And then our bridges stay at 40 and 30 and that's all you'll do for over here so these changes should enable you to get started printing most objects i encourage you to watch the rest of the video to become familiar with the prusa slicer and how you can fine tune these settings for even better prints be sure to hit subscribe the like button and ring the bell for new and upcoming videos thank you Hey everybody, Will with Studio Zombie 3D here with a quick walkthrough of Prusa Slicer. Let's get right to it. In the upper left we have the file menus with our file, edit, window, view, configuration, and our help. On the far right we have our print setting menu, filament, and printer panels with the profiles drop down. We also have the support and infill percentage settings with the brim. Below this we have the file list. In the center we have our build plate with our workspace. Just above this we have our quick toolbar with the load, delete, copy, paste, split, search, enable variable layer height, and the undo redo buttons. Over to the middle left we have the model toolbar with move, scale, rotate, splay on face, cut, paint on supports, and seam painting. The two bottom icons in the corner being your 3D view and the layer preview button. And finally the bar just below the file menu. We have the platter tab with our main workspace. Next to it we have the print setting tab, the filament setting, and finally the printer setting tab. We'll take a closer look at this shortly. Now that we're a little more familiar with the layout, first thing we're going to do is run through the configuration wizard. Mm -hmm. Click on configuration and then we're going to click on the wizard on top. Here we're going to add our printer. In my case it's the Anycubic Viper. It isn't listed but I'm going to use the i3 Mega. Underneath printers we have the filaments tab. This is where you can pick your brand and type of filament. If you don't find your brand listed you can just use the generic options for now. Next underneath is the updates tab. Nothing really has to change here as well as reload from disk. Next under that we have file association that can stay as well. 
And then under view mode, I like to have it set to advanced mode. Click finish. Now that we are back at the main workspace, we will take a look at loading a profile and settings. First, click on the file menu. Then go down to the import tab. Click on import config. Then select the profile file you have saved. In my case, my Viper profile here. Click on open. All right, now that we have our profile loaded, let's take a look at the actual print settings. From the main screen, we're gonna click on the print setting tabs right above here. And here's the print setting tab itself. Right below that, we have our profile tab where we can drop down the menu for our various profiles. Below that, we have our various settings. First, let's take a look at the layers and perimeters tab. Here is where we're gonna set our layer height, the number of perimeters, also, the number of bottom and top layers our prints are going to have. Below this, we have the quality and the advanced options, such as the seam position. Next, we have our infill settings. This will be where you adjust the infill density, the pattern, and the overlap settings. You will also find the ironing options here, print time reduction settings, and the advanced infill options. Be sure to check out the various infill options available to see what works best for you. Continuing down, we have the skirt and brim settings. First, we have the number of loops for the skirt, the distance, as well as the draft shield options, the brim, and then the width of the brim itself. Moving down into our support material tab, we have our various support settings. First, the generate support option and the overhead angle. Under that, we have the raft layer. At the bottom here, we have other options for the support material and raft, the Z contact distance, support pattern, as well as the spacing options. We will explore supports in a future video, so stay tuned. Next, we have our speed settings. This is where we're going to set all the various speed settings for the perimeters, the infill, support, travel speeds, as well as the acceleration options and the auto speed. Under speed, you have the multi extruders, which doesn't apply to most users. Then we have the advanced tab. This is where you're going to set your extrusion width, infill overlap, and bridge flow ratio. You will also find the slicing options for resolution, XY compensation, and elephant's foot compensation. Under the output options tab, we have the sequential pinching options, as well as the file output settings. And the final two tabs, we have notes and dependencies. Here we have a spot to put various notes about the profile. And then under the dependencies tab, this is where we have a place where we can set compatible printers that will work with this profile. Let's move into the filament settings tab now. First, we have the actual filament tab. Here we can set the color, filament diameter, your extrusion multiplier or flow, the density, cost, and spool weight. Under that, we have our nozzle and bed temperatures. Next, we have the cooling settings. Here we can control the fan speeds, which layer to start the fans, and the cooling thresholds. Under advanced, we have the filament type option, the print speed override option, as well as the wipe tower perimeters and the tool chain settings for enabled printers. Next, we have the filament override settings. This is just where you can set overrides for retraction on spec filaments if you need. I tend not to use this tab at all myself. The final three tabs are pretty basic. The custom G-code tab, the notes tab, and finally the dependencies tab where we can set compatible printers. And now moving into the final tab, the printer settings. Starting at the top, we have the general settings. Here we have the bed size and shape, number of extruders, firmware options, and finally advanced general options for extrusion and variable layer height. Moving down into the custom G-code settings, we have our start and G-codes for our printer, as well as other custom G-codes for our color change, sequential printing, 
and changes between layers. Let's continue into the machine limit tab. Here is where we can set our max feed rate, our acceleration, and our jerk limit. You can also set the minimum feed rate here as well. The next tab we have is extruder settings. Here we have the nozzle diameter, the layer height limit, the position, retraction, and our preview color options. Our final two tabs are the notes and the dependency tabs. As with the other two tabs, we can add notes and compatible printers here. Okay, now that we're a little more familiar with Proust the Slicer, let's load Slice and save a file. Just like our last video, I'll be loading a support test piece from the link in the description. Select the file and then click open. Our model is now loaded on the build plate, but we need to change the orientation. You can click the rotate in the middle left toolbar or place on face. Let's use the second option, place on face. You will notice some parts will show up here in patches. Click on the side you want to align to the bed. There we go. Now it's ready to go. Next, on the right side panel, we will need to make sure our supports are enabled. I just use the ones touching build player for this print. The infill at 15% will be more than enough for this print itself. I also like to check the brim to make sure my prints stick really well. All right, now that we have it orientated right, and we have our support and our brim enabled, we can click on Slice. Once it's finished slicing, it'll switch to the preview mode, just like this. In the upper left, you will find the feature time information. This will tell you how much each part of the print will take to print. The slider to the right here will let you go through the different layers and check your print. This way you can see the supports, the infill, and the walls all separately here. To the bottom right, we have our sliced information with the filament used, cost, and time. Now we can click Export, G-Code, and Save. In my case, I'm going to be saving to the removable media. Click Save, and we're done. Be sure to reject the SD card and then we'll jump over to the printer. Alright, over at my Anycubic Viper, I'm just going to load the SD card into it. There we are. And then over, I'm going to hit print. Select the file. Hit our print button. And off it goes. Now, after about half an hour, your print should be finished and they're ready to pull it off the bed. And there it is, ready to go. Alright, now that your print's finished, pull it off the bed and take a look. That's it. You just loaded, sliced, saved, and printed with Prusa Slicer. Load your next file, slice, and print. Let me know how it all goes in the comments. Alright, that's it for a walkthrough of Prusa Slicer. Thanks for watching, everybody. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more videos. Also check out the Studio Zombie 3D Instagram for more going on with the studio. Also be sure to check out our channel partner GL Robotics site for all your 3D printing needs. Thanks everybody, take care and we'll see you in the next video.